Hey, yo, what the f***? This is a pallet right here. The late night flight is paid for by the following. Hello. I have three questions for you. When you're talking NBA with your white co-workers, do you say that Dallas Mavericks point guard Luka Doncic is the best player in the NBA to position yourself as non-threatening in the office? And when black people think that you talk like a white person, do you reply, hey, hey, you would too if you graduated from an HBCU. Are you Rachel Dozer? If you do or are any one of these three, then you are suffering from the contribution of white privilege. Hi, my name is Nassua Nuru, and if you are looking to go from Wayne Newton to Wayne Brady, please give us a call at 1-800-HELL-NO-CAMS. That's 1-800-HELL-NO-CAMS. Give us a call now before you turn into TV. Everybody on a mountain, everybody marching for a young nigga like me to get tsunami on it. I'ma get it, I'ma win a baby. I'll be on my curry till I crash a bird. 40 on it, yeah, I'm acting nerdy. If it's at the appellation to the appellation, I'ma do whatever that it takes to make a black a nation. Hold on. Hey, yo, what the f you think would happen if Trump doesn't concede it? We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish the Constitution for the United States of America. I am from the, the school where we had to learn that by heart, we had to learn the, the Declaration of Independence, you know, by heart. Um, and we actually had to read the Constitution and, and get a general understanding of the amendments and, and what goes on. So with that being said, that I feel like there's a lot of fear mongering about what happens if Trump doesn't concede the election because there's a misinformed uh, um, constituency in America. And I don't think people take enough time to read and educate themselves on the general processes of what happens. And I think when you're misinformed, it allows for other entities to come in and kind of make you think things and, and go awry. So if Trump does not concede, the concession part of it is merely a traditional thing. It's not a necessity. It doesn't matter if he concedes or not. Come January 20th at 12 noon, he will no longer be the president of the United States. There's a few processes that have to take place after we do the election. Um, on December 14th, Congress will certify the electoral votes. And then um, on January 3rd, when the new Congress comes in, they're going to uh, officially declare Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, president and vice president elect. And then on January 20th and the inauguration, they'll officially take over the duties of the office. Right. So, mm -hmm. we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> My God. That is true, though. We, we do have, we, yeah, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. That is, that is a hundred million percent correct. So, to people that are into fear mongering, into wearing that Tim for you, and throwing these wild conspiracies. See, it's one thing to have an idea because that's what Trump is. Trump was an idea. Imagine being in a relationship with your other half. Look at your other half. Is it the idea of that person that makes you want to be with that person? Or is it that person? A lot of us have dealt with the idea. I know I have. I have been with the idea of the woman that I want for four years one time in my life. It's not the woman that I should be with, but I love the idea. Trump as the idea where this is a non-politician, doesn't have the starchy conservatism of a Republican, doesn't have the starchy liberal, liberal ways of a Democrat. He's just a lawless Lex Luthor. And it is what it is with that. And I think people gravitated to that a lot because... 
in 2024, 2028, 2032, you're going to hear names such as The Rock, Tom Hanks, Kanye West, Oprah, maybe even a Michelle Obama. Who knows? And these type of people, these type of personalities are more cinematic. They are sexier names. They can easily win an election versus someone like a Kamala Harris or an AOC or a or whatever Republican candidate you want to throw out there. With all that being said, we should know as Americans, I ain't gonna say no, but you really do need to smarten up, educate yourself, read what happens as far as how a coup can start. And in this case, because all of these mail-in ba- ballots are legal. This is not going to happen. Please make sure you know that your kids, especially I'm talking to black people on this one, whether Trump was going to be president or not, your kids were still going to be able to go to school, graduate through college, get to be a doctor. Don't let none of this shit go crazy. However, however, once again, we're going to have a new president, which is great. That means we have a new feeling, a new look, a new, uh, uh, honestly, new hope, new confidence going forward. And it's going to be, we're going to have to make sure that uh, we hold Biden accountable because there's a lot of things still going on. The racial divide. Well, and let's be even more, um, it was even more important than that, even though that's very, very important to me personally. COVID. People want their, norma- their normality back. So, you know, I want people to not go so crazy. Let's just, I don't want to tell you be happy because we have a new president, but yo, just be proud of yourself. I'm really happy for every American that voted. I'm not even somebody that promotes that, but I'm happy because more people have voted than ever, ever, just to get somebody to up out of here. So I commend the people because when they say the people have spoken through action, This right here, what we have just seen in this last week, this definitely is a picture that is a million words, not just a thousand. Why are black people break dancing in the street just to celebrate Biden when COVID is still acting the up out here on these streets? Yeah, like we're we're literally in the middle of a second wave right now, and I'm I'm happy that uh, Biden Harris won the election. Very much so. I might have did a little two step in my living room, but I am not understanding how black people are rushing out into these crowded streets. I saw uh, it was like in front of the state capitol in Pennsylvania. Uh, they had like a little soul train line sort of situation going on, and this brother was. Break dancing. That's I'm nice. talking pop blocking and you know spinning on the on the ground on the concrete. He ain't even had no cardboard out there, and he had on denim. I like he even that. Had on Adidas sweatsuit. He was just out there happy as hell. And I'm like, what the f- is happening? What's going on? We need to remember the state of the Black Union, and 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 again, we can be happy and like, okay, we, we got this one. This one is going to bode well for us but we need to actually keep our eyes on the ball. I watched the doctor uh, in Chicago say, for people who think that there's hospital beds in a hospital, you're sadly mistaken. You know what I'm saying? These cases are spiking again, and we're out in crowds dancing and celebrating, you know, and there's a lot more work that still has to be done, and I want us to make sure that we keep our eyes on the ball. Hey, are you serious, yo? Are you, yo, you, hold up, honey, honey. They have halfway let people outside. Like, it's, no matter what you say on that, that's over. People want to be outside. People are happy. People are elated. They're showing emotion. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but again, you're playing teacher on 300 million people. You can't, you can't get everybody to sit the f*** down because people are going to be like, nah, f*** that. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy. Biden won. I'm happy. The Lakers won. I'm happy. The Dodgers won. You know what I mean? That's just, it's elation going on right now. And don't get me wrong. You should definitely um, protect yourself. Definitely. Wear your mask. All that. I saw, <laughs> so I know you don't watch uh, sports all the, all the time, 
But I just want to ask you, did you watch the Clemson Notre Dame game that happened last night, which was Saturday? I actually did because I was trying to watch Saturday Night Live. So I okay. saw the, 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 the overtime. Yeah, it was a double overtime game. Clemson, which is the best team in the nation the last two years. They have a great quarterback by the name of Trevor Lawrence, who, which, which this is, look, bro, here's the weird thing. Did not play because he just recently had coronavirus. He supposedly is on like the, like you, when you catch COVID in college football, you're supposed to sit out for two weeks. But mm-hmm. the second week, he's on the sideline with the people, with the mask on. Now, I'm, you know, I get it. But at the same time, leave him home. Leave him home. He should be home. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Notre Dame beat. That was an upset, you know, in the nation's eyes. Everybody with mask on, run into the field, because that's what we do. You run to the field, everybody, oh, we won, we upset these motherfuckers, oh, you know, all that shit, you know? So the point I'm making is that we, we, want our, we want our normality so much. We want it. So the normal things that we just do, just because, you know, we, we had the privilege to do it, we're still in that mode. I mean, in New Jersey, people happy as hell that they have 25 to 50% capacity of a dining area because people want to go outside and hang out. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. This, these are the things that the next president is going to have to figure out where, sure. yo, what can we do moving forward? Because again, if you shut everybody in, it's going to almost seem like fear mongering. But at the same time, will that idea save lives? We don't know. This is what the new president has to figure out moving forward. But, but I mean, there's, all, there's already CDC guidelines. Like you mentioned, there's 25% capacity in restaurants. There's the guidelines to wear your mask. There's the guidelines to stay six feet apart. I don't give a f- how elated you are to be outside. You don't need to be in no crowd breakdancing for Joe Biden. <laughs> Yo, so when you saw the Soul Train line, what type of dances were going on? Was it like old school Soul Train, you know, so? You know, all that was it was it that style? What's going nah, on? There? Like he was he was doing like I said, he was pop locking and doing he did a little spin on the ground on his back. And then the uh the woman that was um around him, they started doing like a little step, you know, a little two step or a little uh sorority step or whatever. So did you feel good for yourself because you two stepped in your house and not two stepped yeah. outside with the soul train dance? Because that sounds so much more fun to, to, to two step in the soul train. But, you know, another thing about it, too, was, like, I, 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 speaking to Black people, again, mm-hmm. in this, like, this elation that you speak of, Van Jones was f- crying on CNN. Yes. Come on, Van. He want to be Jesse Jackson so bad. <laughs> you know Jesse Jackson was crying when Obama likes bro. Come on. Stop. But, but, but hold on. All right. <laughs> Have some f- dignity. But hold on. Young man. Young man. In, in, in his, in Van Jones' defense, they, CNN pays him to be a political pun. Political puns, they get to have opinions. See, in my opinion, in my opinion, this is where Trump be running NBC and CNN and mother CBS to the ground. And I, I be laughing. I'm not with it, but I be laughing because news channels are supposed to be public news. You're supposed to state facts of what you saw, even if it's not the real thing that happened yet, but based on what information you got together and you got to put out, that's what we need to know. But that hasn't happened as much as what it used to these last 20 years. Since Republicans and Democrats have been paying off news news channels, now they have a biased opinion. What that got to do with him crying? Make a point. I'm just making a point. The point I'm making is, is that they hired this man to just showcase his opinion. Even though, even though I don't agree with the fact that CNN, which is supposed to do public news, should not have people that want to speak their opinions all the time, unless they are, you know, uh, people that like, you know, work in Congress, things like that. But okay, this is what you hire, you know, Van Jones for, to basically be a personality Say how you really feel about this. And I got you. Hey, bro, you ain't got to cry. But yo, listen, a lot of people in this nation felt like that. It was great television, riveting television in a time where everybody right now is watching CNN, uh, Fox News, uh, NBC, MSNBC, CBS, more than watching anything else right now. 
You know what I'm saying? So. Hey, yo, what the f? This is a pally sh right here. Now that the first woman, the first black woman, the first Indian woman, vice president elect Kamala Harris is out here now, should we send all of our children, all of them, every single one of them, to HBCUs? I need to take it away. Yo, as soon as COVID is died down and the restrictions are loosened, uh, I am going to take my daughter on a black college tour. Um, I want her to see uh, what HBUs, HBCUs offer. And, you know, I want her to see the sense of pride that um, Kamala has and what she brings to the table from going to HBCU. Another thing that we got to acknowledge is um, that Stacey Abrams, uh, the she was a uh, Georgia uh, contender for governor two years ago. Yeah. And she organized this massive uh, get out the vote voter registration campaign that is probably the reason why Joe Biden will win the state of Georgia because of her efforts. She's an HBCU grad. She graduated from Spelman. Um, Keisha Lance Bottom, the mayor of Atlanta, uh, is a graduate of FAMU and her and Stacey Abrams working together helped push Georgia um, over the top. So it's just something to say about HBCUs. And I went to an HBCU and I remember when I was applying, I was like, yo, I only want to go to HBCUs and, and, and people was in my ear like, I don't know, you should go to a regular college or a PWI college, predominantly white, uh, because when you graduate, you want your degree to kind of make sure that you can get money or whatever. And I'm like, nah, I want to be, and that experience is nothing, like nothing else. I feel like that experience where you're in a space where everybody that is there or most of the people is black. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the reason why I think we crave this black utopian society because it's like, yo, it's not the hood. It's, you know, black people, black culture. The faculty is black for the most part. You know, the president of the university is black. All of these black people surrounded in positive uh, culture, and what comes of that is something that you you can't pay for. You know what I'm saying? So I think we should position our, our children to uh, look at HBCUs as a viable option. Um, how was your experience with uh, an HBCU? I mean, as a student going to an HBCU, it was you know just a kid going to college, to be honest with you. Yeah, you do get a quote-unquote black culture, you know, because compared to maybe a predominantly white school, there are certain things that are going on that wouldn't go on in, you know, a PWI. However, however, I think a few things that you said needs to be stretched out, if you will. So mm -hmm. everybody that graduated from an HBCU is not going to be a mayor of Atlanta not going to get to be a great journalist, may not be mayor of Newark. You know, hold on, just hear me out. That doesn't mean that it's bad. I'm just making the point that it's great to have the experience, but it's always much more, much more smarter, much more smart to make sure that the kids that you bring to these schools know what they want to do when they go to college. So with that being said, as someone that has gone to an HBCU, I'm going to tell you where the HBCU needs to elevate. I'm just keeping it real. HBCUs have to redefine what each school is looking to do. Are they looking to be a technology school? Are they looking to be a school of the arts? Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because this is how you get black children to say, I want to go here because black children that want to go to Spelman want to go to Spelman because dudes go to Morehouse across the street. OK, I went to Norfolk State because there are women that go to Hampton University. I did not know what it is I wanted to do when I went to college. And a lot of people, whether you're white, black, whether you are Hispanic, Asian, 
you're a young person. Everybody does not have that great mindset of knowing what it is that they want to do and understand that, yes, it is OK that you may not know, but it's always, always greater when you have a path, you know, saying that you can walk on and you can direct. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure Mayor Bottoms has put herself in a position of political science, in the field of political science where she has networked, she has interned, she has, you know, she has been with mentors that have been in this, you know, field of study. Everybody doesn't get that. So what I'm saying is, I mean, just to, you know, I'm not piggybacking off of you. I'm actually agreeing with you, but I'm just giving even more, uh, just being more specific HBCUs need to redefine what they're going to be. If Norfolk, if Norfolk State said that they were going to be the greatest communication, like, you know, we're going to be the school of communications and we're going to make sure that your kids uh, can get interned at ESPN or FS1 or ABC, I would, like, I wouldn't have went to Norfolk State because people in my high school fraternity was going to Norfolk State and I felt more comfortable being with people that I know. I would have went there because I'm going to get a communication degree because I want to be, you know, I want to be an anchorman for ESPN. Um, my, my alma mater, UMES, uh, is an agricultural art school. And the only issue with that is I don't know that many Black people want to go to college to learn agriculture. So we need to reshape our thoughts around that too. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, not like, I'm sorry. The point I'm making is once again, with the redefining, you got an, and it's not about saying, I mean, and some people would say, yeah, it should be specific to black children. What I'm just saying is, look, what if Morehouse and Spelman were med schools? Wouldn't that be something? But how it is. <laughs> You're right. Okay. So Howard is, and Howard also, I don't. Howard also targets people that are into theater. Mm. But the thing is, is that I don't think every black person knows that, though. Get what I'm saying? Right. right. So Howard has to put that out there. You know, when I watch ESPN, there's always a US a come to USC commercial. You know what I'm saying? We do business. We do this. We do that. Come to USC. Or, you know, the, the Pac-10 as a whole, as a conference, has this conversation, or be a conversation, a commercial where it's sports, it's education, it's this, it's that. Come here to the Pac-12, go to one of these schools, Arizona, Arizona State, you know, Fresno State, all that type of shit. Where is the commercial for Norfolk State, for Howard, for Hampton, for FAMU, for Tuskegee University? Where is that pipeline? They have to spend the money that they had. They, they, we're on the news saying that, you know, somewhat someone has donated X amount of dollars to these HBCUs. Hey, man, pony up some of that money and use that to campaign and market so you can have the next generation of black children wanting to come to your schools. But the only way they're going to want to come is if you be specific about what type of education they're going to get to lead them, lead these children closer to their dreams. What are some things you would like to see from our new president? Okay, first things first. I want to see you talk to Ice Cube and Ice Cube only, okay? No, no, matter of fact, Ice Cube and Killer Mike together, okay? I need to see that. Long, nice, uh, not a conversation, more of this is a meeting, a plan of action, so we can implement the plan of action. I need to see that, all right? Too much talking about race relations these last two years in America for any president, no matter who was going to be elected, to not include black Americans in 2020. It's just disgusting and unaware if anyone was doing that. That's number one. Also, of course, COVID. I understand that right now we are living with COVID. And even though I said it out loud and, and there is realism to that, it sounds nasty. You know, who wants to like who wants to live with HIV? Who wants to live with herpes? No one wants to live with that. Shit, you know, so with that being said, I want us to move past COVID. I want us to get back 
to our normality. I want to see all of us back at the Barclays going crazy when Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving is going to face LeBron and Anthony Davis. I need to see all that again. You know, so, you know, to be honest with you, when I vote for people, vote for presidents, even if it's a mayor, a governor, whether I want weed in New Jersey or not, I'm just voting based on your character, man. Based on your character, you know, how you present yourself. You can present yourself like an asshole, but if you do it in a way that I like, like the way um, Governor Cuomo is in New York, yo, you may have my vote. So with all that being said, I just want President Joe Biden or President-elect Joe Biden to continue to show strength through his character, you know, but at the same time, you're going to have to evolve as a, and I don't mean to be racist, well, well, show race when I say this, I'm sorry, whatever, but just being honest, you have to evolve the system of the white man. And what I mean by that is you need to change the white man's perspective and you have to be the, the embodiment of that. Just showcasing Kamala is not, you know, that's not the be all end all. That's just the start. There's so much more that goes to that. Being the VP of the first black American president, that's still, you know, that, that gives you a resume, but that doesn't mean you get the right to say, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. What say you? Um, I just want Joe Biden to make his cabinet uh, reflective of the U.S. population. So if we could get about 13% to 15% of his cabinet to be um, black or African-American, um, I think Stacey, Stacey Abrams should head up HUD, take Ben Carson's job uh, so that they can implement the Biden plan and that homeowner initi initiatives that they mentioned. Um, Melanie Hobson, uh, who is a financier, wife of George Lucas, um, but a very respected man in the financial industry, should probably probably be the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Um, Marilyn Mosby, she's an attorney general uh, for uh, the city of Baltimore. Or, yeah, she's an attorney general for Baltimore. And I think that she should be uh, the attorney general of the United States. So these people in these positions are Black women and they are progressive enough in their ideas that their policies will trickle down in a way that's going to affect black people on a national scale <laughs> as opposed to what they're doing in their respective cities. So that way the Biden plan could be implemented. Black people could have, you know, access to certain things uh, through these people in these cabinet positions. I mean, if you know, we live in America, right? It, it, uh, <laughs> you know, you haven't, what, is there any other like race in and or people and creeds that you have in this cabinet, it can't just be black women, which right. sounds great. Yeah. But. All right, so if you realize, if you notice, I only mentioned three cabinet positions. Only I, three. And if you notice and realize that I only mentioned 13 to 15%, which is indicative of our population. That's a good point. So I understand that America is diverse and Joe Biden can have whoever he wants in his cabinet to be reflective of the United States, but... I only give a f about black people at this point. That's cool. That's cool. You voted for a white man. Well, I voted for Kamala Harris. She'll be president soon enough. Soon enough. Soon enough. Hey, yo, what the f This is a pallet right here. Should Dave Chappelle revive the Chappelle show? Yes, and it should be on Netflix or HBO. Wait, maybe I shouldn't say that because you're gonna hit me with the joke that uh, <laughs> that Dave Chappelle put in the SNL monologue. So this question stems from the SNL monologue that not only he did four years ago, which I think that was like 26 million views on, on YouTube. I could be just speculating or throwing out a number, but I mean, it was definitely more than 14 million views the last time I checked in, which was two years ago. So I guess I'm just doing guesstimation at this point. But a lot of people watched that. And here he is on again, more dangerous than he has ever been. I mean, when you call a bunch of poor white people from Ohio, white on live television, smoking a cigarette, you know he's ready to do his own thing all over again. And to see 
well, t- to see if he's willing to do the Chappelle show instead of like, you know, we was just talking about what if Chappelle would host Saturday Night Live every week? And we both was like, man, screw all that. What if he had the Chappelle show and it was like on HBO or, you know, some other, maybe even his own streaming site. Imagine Chappelle having his own streaming site where you can get not only his comedic, like his past uh, comedic stand, or his past stand-up comedy specials, the future uh, comedy specials that he's going to do, and the Chappelle Show, and new episodes of the Chappelle Show. I person, personally believe that 65 million people will subscribe to that streaming app. Hanif, what say you? Um, when I watched it last night, it was funny in that um, the skits from Saturday Night Live felt like Dave Chappelle, you know, created them or actually had a hand in writing them. It was hilarious. You said it was more, it, he, the, the skits were more like Chappelle show skits rather than Saturday Night Live skits. Absolutely. Like, and that's why I was like, uh, maybe Dave Chappelle, I don't know if he should take over Saturday Night Live, which probably not. I don't know how often he can call white people <laughs> And on national television <laughs> and get away with it. They they gave him a pass for election night. He also did a joke that was um funny regarding women. Yeah. And, the law. And, and you know, Dave Chappelle is going to push that envelope. So that's why I think he does need to have a show on Netflix or HBO Max so that way he could, you know, freely promote and do what he needs to do in order to touch what he needs to touch and, and still be hilarious. Um, but he talked about HBO um, Max and Netflix, not him not receiving any money for the Chappelle show streaming on those services now. And he starts talking about his grandfather, who was a former slave. <laughs> and he was like, if my grandfather was alive today to see this, he'd probably be like, that got bored so more than I ever did. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, like, so, and, and then, and then the skit that he did, um, if you're going to watch it, he did a skit with Aunt Jemima, uh, Maya, Maya Rudolph was playing Aunt Jemima, uh, Keenan Thompson was playing Uncle Ben, Dave Chappelle was playing the Allstate guy, <laughs> and, uh, Pete Davis was playing Count Chocula. What? Uh, they, yeah. they, they was talking about they they, they gonna take Count Chocula off the cereal box, and he like, yo, I'm not even black, I'm chocolate, I'm literally chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> but they had a white dude playing it, so that's what made it even funnier. It, but his Pete, Pete Davidson is not white. Pete Davidson is white. He's he's Jewish American. He's white. Pete Davidson's not, not black at all? You talking about the Pete Davidson that was dating uh, Ariana Grande, right? Yeah. The one that said he, he, he almost wanted to commit suicide. Yeah, bro, he is a, you know, a Jewish American Long Islander, bro. You sure he don't have no black in him? He just not like a light-skinned black man? Nah, he just, he just act like Adam Sandler and, you know, he's a millennial, so he's a little cool. Well, he's not a millennial. He's a Generation Xer, but, um, you know, just... Comes off a little cooler. That's all. But I, I, I want to look up right now. I'm waiting for my wait. Give me, let me get my computer. You got me talking while I'm recording. Well, keep talking about uh, Pete Davis and, and, and the, and the um, you know, and Dave Chappelle while I'm over here doing this. No, I mean, because I, I think remember on the previous episode you you was trying to mention him, and I don't know if it slipped your mind where he played Obama, and you thought that that was that wasn't Pete Davidson. Oh, it wasn't Pete Davidson? No, sir. That wasn't Pete. Pete Davidson wasn't even around then. Never. Okay. Yeah, he's look okay. So I'm trying to see. Boom, 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 boom. See, he's been on Wild and Out. That's what I'm saying. Like he he does the cool. Shit. This dude is this dude is a you know a white American Jewish person. Yep, yep, yep. I'm over here reading right now. His father was a New York City firefighter. You know, his father does not have a... Yep, oh, here we go. Davidson's father, who was mostly Jewish ancestry, was ra- he was raised Catholic, though, and attended Catholic school. Although this doesn't say whether he's black or white, but I mean, come on now. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not Haitian, you're definitely not in no Catholic school, unless you play basketball, so come on now. 
I don't know. We're going to have to let the jury be out on that. He's definitely racially ambiguous. Because he doesn't say it? Come on, this dude is like white as shit. Like, no disrespect to white people. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? We just, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not trying to take Pete Davidson in the race draft. We're just trying to find out. We're just trying to figure this out real fast. I'm actually the, the head of the light skin delegation, and I would need to uh, clarify that. Okay, no problem. You know what? Hold on, hold on. I think mm-hmm. we might have it. It says, just in case you were wondering about that, suppose... Uh, family missing, um, the cow chocolate bit his, his, his ancestry, according to uh, ethnic celebs, a website, it says he is reportedly Ashkenazi Jewish, Irish, German, Scottish, England, English, and 116th Sicilian. So that's that's where the black blood is coming from, the Sicilian. Stop making jokes. Don't make jokes like that. Italians are not black people. No, Sicilians are. <laughs> All right. Embarrassing moments. So, Hani, yo, in like one minute, can you tell me, you know, your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> All right, so actually happened to me the other day. Okay. Um, on, on election night, as a matter of fact, I was I was in here and I was drinking. I had a bottle of wine by myself. Uh, you know, as we get later into the, the election process. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to anticipate and see if I'm gonna see an outcome before I have to go to sleep. And I'm drinking, and I'm actually you know I'm through the whole bottle, and I'm tipsy. So I started shooting out text messages. Uh, and I ended up shooting the text message to a young lady who I hadn't spoken to in a while. True. And, you know, I proceed to go about my business. I put my phone down and forgot about it. So an hour goes by and she had texted me back. And I'm like, oh shit, that whole hour went by. And she texted me back like, hey love, how you doing? So I'm like, yo, my bad. I mean, the, I missed this text. So we going back and forth. And she like, yo, I'm horny as hell right now. And I'm like, oh. So she was like, um, can you send me a nude? So in my mind, I'm like, nah. I'm like, we don't, we, ain't, we don't talk like that. Like, we ain't never had that conversation before. Like, what's going on? So she like, nah, I know, but I ain't hear from you in a while and I'm kind of feeling it right now. So I'm thinking to myself like, hmm, all right, let me see what I can do. So I start getting ready, <laughs> checking my lighting to work on my angle, make sure I'm moisturizing, look good and all that. About to send her a flick. So as I'm preparing and about to send her a flick, I get a Another text like, yo, bro, this ain't the person who you thought you was texting. This is the wrong number. I was just, with you. please don't send that. <laughs> I just deleted it and kept it moving. Damn. That's wild. <laughs> That's some wild shit right there, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo, hold up. So, <laughs> so you got catfish? It, well, it was the, like she changed, she must have changed her number. And when she changed her number, I, I haven't texted her in a minute. So when I sent her a text, I'm thinking it's the same number. It was still work. And then when she was talking back and forth with me, I thought, like, all right. And he, he, whoever it was on the other end was Damn, that's crazy, yo. That's crazy. So one of my more embarrassing moments, I have a few, but I'll just tell one. To, and, and I'm definitely going to be name dropping because I want want people to know that I've been in the industry at one point in time in my life. So years ago, maybe about 2013, I developed a, a show, a program here in you know our great city of Newark or Nork, as some people like to pronounce Nork, N-O-R-K, not N-E-W-A-R-K, but that's cool. And it was at this place called Nonfiction Radio. I created this show called Black Pilot Radio. Now, that doesn't matter, but I just want to put that out there because Black Pilot Radio found a way to get to two-time Grammy Award winning producer, Jerry Wanda. Mm. And 
This sister, I forgot her name. Damn, I wish I remember her name. Um, she's a she's a she's a good woman though. Uh, she is a she was a personality. She could still be. I don't know. I haven't been in nonfiction for a long, long, long time. But she was a personality who had some connections. Her father had some connections. She interned at ABC, Good Morning ABC, at one point in time of her life. Dope, dope sister. And she actually had to connect to get um, Jerry Wonder to Nonfiction Studios. Mm-hmm. We went down there, me and her interviewed him, and I wasn't even supposed to really be the one interviewing. It was all her, but she asked me to, you know, to come, and I appreciate that. And this dude saw my personality, saw the way I was talking, and he was just like, yo, I know I was here for her, but bro, man, you just had me bugging out, having a good time. And I'm like, oh, yo, man, it's, it's a pleasure. This is what I do. I'm the program director here. This is what I do. So anyway, he's like, yo, I got this party that I'm going to have at my studios, Platinum Recording Studios in New York. I would love for you to come, you know, and my homegirl, you know, she's going to be there. So I would like to talk to you guys because I want to invest in your radio station. So this was already like, oh, we bought to turn this thing up. So I go to the studio, right? The day that he told me to go. And you wouldn't even, you wouldn't believe this. You wouldn't believe this. So he's like, yo, we having a little party today. Like I told you, you know, so I just want to keep it real with you. Don't run up in, don't run up in everybody's face and tell people that you work radio and, you know, just be cool. Just be humble. Just shake people's hands. You know, you can tell people that you work radio, you know, like, hey, I work for nonfiction, but don't be over here trying to get jobs. I said, all right, no problem. So the first thing what happens is I saw Ebro from Hot 97, right? Mm-hmm. I see him. So I just shook his hand. I just like, yo, Ebro, what's up? You know, so he's like, hey, what's good? How you? You know, I said, who are you? I'm like, yo, I'm the sword. Da, da, da. I'm a program director for a radio station. But again, Jerry told me not to talk about that. I'm just letting you know who I am. He just started laughing. He's like, yo, you cool. What's up? It's like, yo, um, I don't know if you went to the back, but it's drinks in the back. You know what I'm saying? Have a good time. I'm like, oh, all right, good looking, Ebro. You know, keep walking. Met Loaded Lux and shit. So here's where the embarrassing part comes, right? You know I like the rap. Mm. So we go and we go to the studio part and it's like 60 people in the studio vibing. Jerry Wonder playing his bass. He playing the guitar. We just cooling and people just started freestyling. They're just coming to the circle and start freestyling. Loaded Lux didn't say nothing. He was just chilling. So, you know, I'm listening to the beat. I'm getting my rhymes together in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm about to get right on here, right? So I jump into the circle. Now, Jerry Wonder does not know that I rap. Right. He don't know this. He see me as, you know, this young, you know, radio personality. So here I go, bro. I got my 16 bars ready. I'm about to hit him. So as I get to my eighth bar, I can't go no more. But let me tell you, right? So I, you know, I just stopped, whatever. I did some freestyle, a little, a little more freestyle. Everybody like, oh, all right, cool. Jerry Wonder made the face like he didn't know, but he was like shocked, but he kept going. So his was funny because I'm embarrassed that, you know, I didn't get like my full grown man 16. I was ready. I was a little, you know, I was nervous, but I was cool. Loaded Luck came to me five minutes later and was like, yo, I'm going to just keep it real with you. I was really waiting what that ninth and 10th bar was because those eight bars, bro, was fire. Like, what's your number? I was like, oh, shit, that's what's up. Load it. You know, we talking, chopping it. I thought that was great. But I was just embarrassed at the fact that I didn't remember my ninth and 10th bar. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, my God, what an opportunity that could have been squandered, especially when you came there as a radio personality. Now you over here want to give people some bars. You know what I mean? So... The next morning, you know, I wake up because I'm over here a little embarrassed. Like, oh, man, I can't believe I just messed up like that. I don't care if a little looks like my bars. But so Jerry Wonder calls me in the morning. And he's like, yo, I just want to let you know that I did not know you was going to do that. I said, yeah, you know, I like the rap. You know, he was like, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. Yo. You are a multifaceted person. Like, yo, you could rap. You could do radio. Like, this is crazy for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just keep doing what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, long story short, he couldn't invest in our in our stuff because what we wanted to, you know, they got to get a frequency. That's a whole nother operation. It's a whole nother operation. And I wound up leaving nonfiction 
maybe like three, four months after that anyway. But that was a very embarrassing moment for me, man. I, I felt like even though I know it wasn't the opportunity that was going to take me where I wanted to go, I still wanted I wanted it to be better. But I'm happy that, you know, I still have those contacts and, you know, they still hit me up from time to time. Just asking how I'm doing and what, you know, what's going on. I mean, they'd be nice if they would network with me, and you know, get me where I would like to be. But, you know, I'm very happy that I got to showcase talent around some good people. You know, compliments aren't as good as money and, you know, legality contracts. But, you know, it's a start. Hey, yo, what the f***? This is a palace right here. Broke as a broken dream. Give me your application. Give me pack of that pack of nation. Hella cheap, be evaporating. I'm so hungry, I'm salivating. My girl left me for fascination over women I haven't rated. Now I'm selling these dimes to quarters. Got me caught up in law and order. She like get out, she aggravated. She so turned up, she ventilated. I wish life was a black Mercedes. Every day with a black and lady. To a room at the Renaissance. Put it up in your mouth, up in Aganelli. We are flying my pilots. We aviating. We the CEOs, my pilots. You pay your money. I am losing my pilots. I'm 80 grand. Take your feet up, my pilot, go take a nanny. About to set up a plan for the East Atlantic. I need condos and women to be romantic. Need a horse shaking, send up zebra bandits. See my girl in the back like a wee fanatic. Hey, yo, what the f? This is a palace right here.